Hello my friends, this past weekend I spent a couple of hours trying to reorganize my wardrobe or actually more like shopping it just because as you probably noticed I am a creature of habit so whenever I start using a new bag, a new wallet, even a sweater I tend to neglect the rest of my pieces so I wanted to take a couple of hours just to re-explore the pieces that I already own but while I was doing that I came across some pieces that I feel like I'll never reach for again. So today's video is going to be about popular luxury pieces that I will no longer buy and some pieces that I wish I could return and get my money back. And while I wouldn't suggest that you avoid all these pieces, I would just encourage you to have a think about them because most of them are kind of too trendy. They're not going to last a long time in your collection either because you'll get tired of them or because they're not the best quality. And then some pieces, I just feel like it's kind of redundant to have more than one of in your collection. So if you'd like to see what luxury pieces I wish I could return, then please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and keep on watching. Let's dive straight in. And I think we should start with ready to wear. I am a big fan of luxury and designer ready to wear, mainly because of the quality, the cuts, the fits. And because I do think that if you buy the right pieces, they will last decades, if not a lifetime. So I am a big fan of designer ready to wear, but this one group of products, I wish I hadn't spent as much money on as I did, which is going to be t-shirts that have huge branding and logos on them. These are basically t-shirts that are almost like a walking, be a board for each brand and I pulled that too from Gucci not because I have anything against Gucci but these are two pieces that are not actually underneath my bed I have a tub of t-shirts and sweaters that are branded just like these that I no longer wear but these I would still wear to the gym every once in a while so these two I actually had in my wardrobe again nothing against Gucci this goes for all brands out there but I did go through a phase of wearing these t-shirts not only at home but this was my uniform maybe four or five years ago I wore these branded t-shirts with a Balmain jacket which it doesn't get any more cliche than that do you guys remember those Balmain jackets that's also something that I could have included here I would never buy a Balmain jacket at this point because I think even though it is a nice flattering cut it is not a blazer that I personally would spend the money on at this point. I think it has been kind of overdone. I'm sure it will come back in a few decades, but right now Balmain is not a brand that I think is worth our money. If you find a beautiful jacket that you love and it suits you, wait until it goes on sale because I can guarantee that it will. But anyway, I wore a ton of these t-shirts from different brands, not just Gucci, with a Balmain t-shirt, sorry, with a Balmain blazer for years. And it's just not something that I would really wear, at least not out. You may remember me wearing these t-shirts at the beginning of my YouTube channel, just because most of those videos were filmed during 2020 when we didn't really go anywhere. So I would still wear these t-shirts at home. I would wear them to the gym. I would wear them maybe to the beach. I've worn this to the beach a few times and they're just fine. But I feel like I could have done the same thing with a simple white t-shirt that is a fraction of the price. So this is not something that I would suggest that you spend money on and I shouldn't either because if you're going to buy designer ready to wear, I feel like you should invest in pieces that you know will last a long time and that aren't just a simple t-shirt with a huge branding on them. If you find a t-shirt that has a beautiful graphic, if it's in a special color, if it's made of a unique fabric, by all means go for it. But when it comes to simple t-shirts like this, I think you're much better off saving your money for a tailoring piece or just a beautiful, simple cashmere sweater. So these next pieces weren't actually on my list that I compiled this morning, but looking at this t-shirt inspired me to include them here. The next group of products that I will not be buying is going to be anything designer and pricey in white. And why you may ask, I am personally just not the kind of person who can keep a white t-shirt, a white sweater, a white shirt, or a white tailoring piece 
perfectly white. I wear a lot of skincare, I wear a ton of sunscreen, different vitamin C serums that can rub off on the color of your shirt or t-shirt and actually turn them orange. I have played around with self tanners just because I'm so pasty and I cannot, nor do I want to go in the sun. So I'm just not the kind of person who can maintain a white t-shirt perfectly white. It doesn't matter if I take them to the dry cleaner, these are not just not pieces that I am able to keep in good shape. And I feel like if you are spending money on these pieces, you probably want to enjoy them for a little while. You don't just want to wear them for a couple of months and then buy a brand new t-shirt or buy a brand new sweater. Because when it comes to white pieces, let's be honest, they're only really beautiful if they're crisp white. They definitely lose their charm if they start turning yellow or orange or if they get dirty and these pieces definitely do. So for me, this is something that I have to be careful with. Next up, two types of shoes that I shouldn't be buying any more of and I felt really strongly about one of them until I realized that I broke my own rule, which you'll see in an upcoming unboxing, but I'm still going to include it here because I know I shouldn't have bought what I did, but the two types of shoes that I shouldn't buy any more of are going to be loafers and slippers or any kind of open style shoes. Why loafers, you may ask. I feel like I'm never able to take advantage of my loafers. It doesn't matter how beautiful they look on the shelf, they're just not the kind of shoes that I ever reach for. I feel like my most worn pair of loafers is the Saga loafers from Hermes, which I loved when I worked in an office, but I no longer do. So I feel like I don't really wear loafers anymore. I have my beautiful Paris loafers from Hermes, which I feel like I have worn maybe once or twice. My Saga loafers, since I no longer go to an office, I never wear anymore. So I completely understand that it is a style of shoes that suits a lot of people. They are stunning. If you work in a more formal setting, you do need them and I would suggest that you invest in them. But personally, it's just not the kind of thing that I reach for. And I feel like it's so important that if you want to become a conscious luxury consumer, which I am trying to be, you buy pieces that you know you will be able to take advantage of. And for me, loafers are just not things that I ever reach for. I'm grateful to have the pieces that I already do, but I just really don't need any more of them. And then open style shoes, slippers, so the likes of the Izmir and the orange sandals are just not things that I am personally able to wear outside. I have tried my best and it's just not something that I can do. I'm too much of a germaphobe and every time I wore my Izmir sandals out afterwards I spent 15 minutes in the shower scrubbing my feet however I did just buy something which is breaking this rule which you'll see in an upcoming unboxing I know so well that I shouldn't have bought it but I got sucked in can you guess what I just bought please let me know in the comment section I bought it because I am planning on wearing it at home We'll see how that goes, but I bought the Dior slippers as well to wear at home and they are not the most comfortable. So I want to say I've worn them a handful of times. They look beautiful, but they're just not the kind of thing that you'd want to wear at home. And again, I'm not really going to wear them out. So anyway, try to be stronger than I was and not buy any open style shoes if you don't feel like you are going to be able to take advantage of them. They're beautiful, but if you're as much of a germaphobe as I am, they are probably not the best investment to me. These next few pieces, I might have already talked about before in a previous video, but I had to include them here because I came across quite a few of them this past weekend and I was just so mad at myself for buying so many of them, which are going to be back charms, rodeos from Hermes specifically, which I went through a phase of trying to collect every single solid colored Hermes rodeo out there, which for me in hindsight was kind of a waste of money. I still like having some rodeos in my collection because they can definitely add a pop of color to a bag or if you have some more simplistic bags, they are a nice way to spice them up, but you definitely don't need more than just a couple of them. I could have just bought the So Black range and stop right there. I definitely did not need to buy any more of them because my most used rodeos, I would say, are my So Black GM Rodeo, my So Black PM Rodeo, and then the one that I bought most recently with a touch of Blizzard. 
the rest of my rodeo collection is sitting in a drawer completely untouched so back charms are definitely something that i would say to be careful with because they can really quickly add up they might not seem like a large purchase to make but the more you buy the more expensive they become and at the end of your rodeo journey you might find that you could have pretty much bought an entire bag with the money that you spent on back charms so there are not pieces that i would suggest that you buy any more than just a couple of i know it's a huge trend on social media to build this huge stable of rodeos in every single color of the rainbow but i personally don't think that they are worth your money your time and their real estate in your wardrobe you might as well spend the money on pieces that are actually unique and that will add a different facet to your collection because after having one two or three rodeos in your collection they will all end up looking and doing the exact same thing speaking of pieces that can also really add up SLGs are another group of pieces that I would suggest that you're careful with because they can really quickly add up without you realizing when it comes to price. You can walk into a luxury boutique and more often than not the most affordable pieces or the most accessibly priced pieces are going to be SLGs. So I feel like a lot of people fall into the trap of buying a wallet then they start saving up for a bag but before they can get to getting the bag they spend the money on another piece of slg because it gives them instant gratification trust me i've been there so i am trying to be better about not buying any more wallets card holders and slgs i went through a phase again of buying quite a few of them and now i have the price of a birkin and maybe even two birkins just in small leather goods i feel like the only sort of exception to the rule the only piece that i don't regret buying more of are my kelly wallets just because i can actually use them as bags on their own they look absolutely stunning just as stunning as standalone bags as they do a wallet being used inside of another bag so those i don't regret even though i probably shouldn't have bought as many as i did but i feel like when it comes to buying slgs there are only really two pieces that you need i would suggest that you get a larger wallet maybe a wallet like the kelly wallet that you can not only use inside other bags as a wallet but you can also use it as a standalone bag and it can do everything that you need it to do and maybe i would recommend buying a simple card holder something that you can use in smaller bags or if you don't want to carry out a bag, it's something that you can just shove in your pocket. The next pieces that I will not be buying are going to be luxury collaboration pieces, just because I feel like most of them don't really make sense at this point. I loved the idea of collaborations when they first started coming out. I felt it was novelty. It was something that we had never seen before in the luxury space. But now there is a new luxury collaboration launching what feels like every single week and i feel like they kind of lost their charm now there are exceptions like the fendace collaboration which i loved i felt that it made so much sense the two brands are both some of the most beloved brands from italy they have a really similar aesthetic the pieces were really beautifully done to me the whole collection just made sense whereas some of them like the adidas gucci collaboration I have no idea what they were thinking so i feel like there might be a couple of collaborations that i will be tempted by but most of them i don't think are worth our money because most pieces will be a little bit more expensive just because of the hype and if you really think about it if there is a popular piece that is launched during a collaboration that sells really well most brands will come out with a similar version in their core line sooner or later for a fraction of the price here i'm talking about things like the dior remova clutch bags which i own and love but now i could go and buy the exact same bag for i think half the price directly from remova balenciaga did the same thing when they launched their hourglass bag in collaboration with gucci it was so popular that balenciaga did their own version the only difference is that it's not in the double g the gg logo but it's in the double b logo i guess they call it so it just has the balenciaga logo but it is in the exact same colorway as the gucci balenciaga collaboration 
our class back was. So I would say that be careful with collaborations unless you find a piece that is really unique, that really speaks to you, or if it's your favorite brand collaborating with someone else that you adore, I feel like it's going to be worth the money just because of the sentimental value. But I would definitely not recommend that you go out of your way to get a collaboration piece because limited edition really doesn't mean that much these days. Two more pieces that I won't be buying, one of which is a group of fine jewelry products, which if you know me, you know that I'm a big advocate of buying fine jewelry pieces, especially over custom jewelry. So I could have included custom jewelry here too, but I wanted to talk to you about a specific line of fine jewelry pieces especially when it comes to Hermes, which are going to be bracelets and necklaces that have a T-bar closure to them. I think I have spoken about this little flaw that Hermes has going on in a previous video of mine, but I wanted to make sure that I bring it up here too, because I just lost a bracelet a couple of weeks ago, a rose gold bracelet from Hermes, which made me quite upset. Thankfully, it wasn't a piece that I was in love with, but I would still prefer to have it in my possession rather than now not having it. But I know, especially after this experience, that I will not be buying anything from Hermes that has a T-bar closure to it, which was actually a hard decision to make because I actually had something on my wish list that had a T-bar closure, which was the rose gold Shandong classic bracelet from Hermes. It's something that I was thinking about ordering but it is not something that I am willing to buy because it has the T-bar closure. As beautiful as it is, because I do love the look of a T-bar closure, especially in a more simplistic piece, I think it looks stunning when it's made the focal point. So the bracelet that I lost, I actually used to wear upside down with the T-bar closure facing outward because I love the look of it so much, but it is just not secure enough in my opinion and in my experience for a piece that is so expensive. If it's on a custom jewelry piece that doesn't cost you more than a couple hundred dollars, fine, I love the look of it, but when it comes to a solid rose gold piece, it's just not enough to have a T-bar closure. And I'm sure that there are different qualities of T-bar closures and I'm sure you can tweak them to make them a little bit more secure. But when it comes to MS pieces, I would not suggest that you buy any pieces with a T-bar closure at this point. And last but not least, this was a hard realization to make, but I just have to say, I cannot buy any more bags in colors, especially when it comes to Hermes. I just simply don't reach for bags in different colors other than black. I feel like as long as I have the same bag, but in black, I will always go for the black version of it. And it was funny, a couple of you pointed out in my last video, which was on my most used bags, that all of my bags that I use on a regular basis are in black, which I didn't even realize because it's just so second nature for me, but it was a great point. And thankfully I don't have too many bags in color at this point. And the ones that I do, I love and I'm really grateful for, and they're all the color that I need in my collection because as beautiful as colors are, especially when it comes to RMS, if there is a brand that can truly blend a unique, special jaw-dropping shade, it is RMS. Unfortunately, if I have the option of a black bag, that's what I will go for, unless I'm wearing a really light colored outfit like I am today, in which case I will opt for a fav or a gold bag or maybe even grease asphalt, which I guess are still neutral. They're not that crazy as green would be because yes, they're beautiful shades, but they're just simply not my aesthetic. And I feel like it is going to be a controversial topic because some of you will very much disagree with me but maybe you're the exact opposite. Maybe you love a colored bag and you would never buy a black bag because it's just not something that you feel like you need to spend the money on, which I would personally have a hard time understanding, but I completely get it. So I think it just comes down to personal preference. And for me, black bags are the one that I really love and enjoy. I wouldn't return my colored bags, but at the end of the day, I just simply don't need any more than what I already have. Maybe I could see myself buying a couple more neutral but light colored bags that are not quite as expensive as Hermes, but for me, I just feel like I don't need anything other than black bags. If I didn't buy any more bags in a color other than black for the rest of my life, I would be 
perfectly content. And my friends, this completes today's video on luxury pieces that I will no longer buy, or I should say, I should not buy any more of. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you got something out of it. Please let me know in the comment section what pieces you're not buying anymore or what are the pieces that you're struggling to resist. Please let us know in the comment section so we can help out one another. But I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more videos from me. I appreciate you being here and watching and I hope to see you back here with a new video really, really soon.